that is to pray for somebody, okay, and to tell them that, that you prayed for them. And so, so I'll give each of you one of these, and you can uh, make that a part of your, uh, make that a part of your um, your praying, okay? Pass these out here. sure I got enough. You guys remember to, to to pray for somebody this week and let them know that that you're praying for them and and that'll be a wonderful thing a wonderful gift that you can give to somebody okay before we go back to our seats will you fold your hands and pray with me yeah. heavenly father, father thank, you thank you for the gift of jesus, gift of jesus and, making us and making us brothers and sisters in christ Help us to live out our faith in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys very much for coming up today. You can go back to your seats. Our worship will continue with the hymn of the day, number 644.
Jesus prayed, I have given them your word. In Psalm 1, David likened the person who meditated on this word day and night to a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. May we have the word of God in our hearts and minds and souls so that we can live in this world, not of it, as Jesus prayed, and make a difference in his name. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the world needs to change. That's not a shocking statement, right? It's not a statement that would get much of an argument, right? You merely have to glance at the news on the television or the internet or some other social media format to agree that the world does need to change. But how realistic is that? How is the world going to change for the better? There's a lot of people that think we're beyond the point of no return. That's just too late. Just give up on it. We just need to wait for Jesus to come and do his thing. But is it really too late? Jesus says in the text for today, I do not ask that you, Holy Father, take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. I think that serves as a big clue for us about the world and about change. Jesus, as he turns to his father in prayer, knows that change is possible because he knows the power of his father, knows the power of his word, the power of his name, and how it works against the evil one. And as we overhear Jesus in the intimacy of his prayer, He can be trusted that change is not only possible, but it's his will through us as his disciples. This portion of the Gospel of John records this prayer that we call the high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed to his father right before his arrest in the garden. And Jesus is specifically praying for his disciples then, and in turn, for each and every one of us today as his disciples. The world back then needed to change too. And what I mean by that is the law and gospel message needed to infiltrate the lives of many people. It was up to the disciples to carry on the work that Jesus had started. Jesus knew that he would soon be ascending into heaven. He would not be a physical presence for the long haul. And Jesus also knew the job would be very hard. They were in the world, but not of the world. He knew that would be a very hard balance to maintain. Because these disciples were men, sinful men. They were ambitious to the point of fighting against one another. They were politically minded. They wanted rewards for their hard work. They got tired. They were lured by the trappings of the world. Simply put, the disciples needed protection from the evil one. The same is true for each and every one of us as his disciples today. We need protection from the evil one and the world in which we live because they both will seek to steal life from us. They seek to steal life from us while their message is that life is found in them and in them alone. That combined with the day in and day out tediousness and challenges of life can simply be overwhelming. Sometimes life can just be too long, too hard, or too boring, and we lose our Christian hope, we lose our joy, and succumb to despair. And it's at times like that when we try to find meaning in life in things other than God. And Jesus knew that. He understood that. And so he prayed for his disciples. He prayed for you. And the disciples had powerful things on their side. They had prayer. They had the word, and they had the power of the Holy Spirit. And they did change their period of the world by the word and spirit and how they lived their lives in love for one another. Slowly, day by day, through the Spirit, they attracted others to Jesus and his love and grace. 
And brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the very same thing. We have prayer. We have God's power and a powerful and authoritative word. And we have the Holy Spirit. You and I are in the world, but not of the world. And yes, again, that's a very hard balance to maintain. Because the world hates you. Or does it? When was the last time you felt hated by the world? Here's the deal. You should feel that way. The world, where Jesus tells us, will hate us. Now, wait a minute, though. If, if we're going to be great evangelists for Christ, shouldn't we be loved by the world so we can get the word out? But if that's the case, what are you being loved for? If the world loves us because we resemble the world, then absolutely not. If you're the coolest parents because anything goes in your house, then no. If sleepovers at your house mean no church on Sunday, then no. If people who know you don't know God's word and where it stands on things like same-sex marriage or infant baptism or gambling or how one is saved by grace alone, then maybe you've blended in with the world. Wrong is wrong, even if everybody in the world doesn't. Because, yes, it is so easy for us to get pulled in by the world. Wrong can become so normal in our lives that it ceases to be wrong. In fact, wrong can even become right for us. Righteousness cannot help but hate evil. That may be true, but we like to negotiate with evil, don't we? We like to rationalize our evil and sinful actions. We say things like, well, that really wasn't a lie. I just kept out some, some key parts. And we do that across the board with all kinds of different things in our lives. We, we try to rationalize our sinfulness and say, it's really not that bad. It's really not that big of a deal. And so, yes, Jesus knows that living in this world is hard, very hard for us. He knows our sins, our failures. And that's what the cross the empty tomb of Easter and the victory of the resurrection are all about. About forgiveness, strength, and encouragement to keep going. To keep going as we live out our lives of faith in this world. What a better vote of confidence then when Jesus prays that we not be taken out of this world because there is work to be done. And we are the ones who he has equipped and empowered to do it. And not only that, but Jesus trusts us to do his work. Because, again, this world does need to change. And the world can change one little bit at a time. The world needs to see the difference that God makes in us through, through his grace, through his love. We are blessed to answer his call. And to be able to live out our lives in a way that, that puts Christ first and, and allows others to see that. So what's the answer to all of this? How do we know we're not acting of the world? How do we live in the world, use it, yet not bow down to it or be swept away by it? Well, here's the deal. It is an everyday, hour-by-hour, minute-by-minute battle in our lives. How will my actions or my decisions affect my life as a Christian? How will my actions or my decisions affect how others view my life as a Christian person? How do I use my Christian liberty to further the gospel in my community and in this world? It's a one step at a time, one decision at a time, one victory at a time life. And it's exactly why Jesus prayed for us and continues to pray for us. Like I told the kids, it's a wonderful blessing that Jesus continues to intercede for us, to pray for us 24-7. It's the victory, 
hard fought, deeply committed the step that was actually a giant leap into hell that's been taken and made and won for us. Jesus was in the world, struggling against the world, that we would no longer be of the world, that we would not perish with the world. He was hated by the world, rejected by the world, killed by the world, so that someday we could be taken out of this world to eternal bliss that's out of this world. But for now, for now, we are in the world. And in our baptism, we are also in Christ. So that everything that he won during his earthly sojourn is ours. And so reading his word, partaking of the sacraments, proclaiming his word to others, living our lives in this victory, the Holy Spirit enables and equips us through repentance and grace to clean up our little corner of the world to make a difference for eternity. So until Jesus comes again, we do have work to do. And what a wonderful privilege it is, the privilege of proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming that good news, that good news that we treasure so much of forgiveness, life, and salvation. We are in the world, not of the world. We are in Christ. And being in Christ while being in the world is all Christ needs to change the world for his kingdom. That's his plan. And he has the power to work that change. And that in and of itself is an answer to Jesus' prayer. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ will return to claim his disciples as his own. And so until then, may we be found living in Christ, out to serve with his word and in his powerful name. Amen. At this time, please stand for the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly King, once again you have gathered us before your presence. Grant that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives and gaze upon your beauty manifested here in your word and sacrament. Graciously hear our prayers as we now inquire in your temple. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, you led your apostles to choose Matthias to replace Judas. Guide your church on earth as she calls and chooses men to serve in the apostolic office, that your word would continue to grow and bear fruit. Keep these men faithful and bless their ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our protector and savior. Look in mercy upon those suffering persecution for the sake of your name. Many have been forsaken even by father, mother, and friend. Take them into your keeping. Hear their cries and do not let them be afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all nations, since it is your will that we would pray for all in authority, we believe with confidence that you hear our prayers on behalf of our president, governor, Congress, legislature, and judges. Teach them the testimony of truth, that they may be wise and effective in their offices. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, you have testified that eternal life is given in your Son, and that whoever has him has life. You also promise that you will hear whatever we ask according to your will. Hear now our prayers for all who are sick and in distress especially Ruth Wehmeyer, Norma Rahm, Joe Graziano, Chris Thompson, Justin C., Gene Heitman, Debbie Heitman, and Colton Doherty. Heal them and give life to all those who hold your son in faithful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, as we eat and drink our Savior's body and blood, give us your light and salvation, strong and courageous hearts, and never-failing hope that we may wait steadfastly for you and your final deliverance. Lord, in your mercy. 
Holy Father, accept the prayers we offer through your Son, our Savior, and keep us forever in your name and word, that we may be one just as you are one. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he did the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Bless we the Lord. Be the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn number 821.
Grace happens here as we receive Christ's word and sacrament to strengthen and equip us to go out from here into the world, but not of the world, to be people through whom grace happens as we share uh, God's love, grace, and forgiveness with others. A few quick announcements. Uh, first of all, LWML uh, will be meeting uh, right after service here. Um, also coming up on this Thursday is our Early Childhood Center graduation service at 6 o'clock. Um, and then also with that, uh, a big thank you uh, to everyone for the large amount of stuff we've been able to collect for our Early Childhood Center wish list. Uh, thank you very much for all your donations. They've been a, a huge help and blessing for our Early Childhood Center ministry. Um, do we have any other announcements this morning? All right, with that, have a great day in the Lord.